to go over crafting your ultimate sports betting strategy. I'm gonna go step by step with you guys and teach you exactly the stuff that you need to know, be able to actually put together a nice strategy that you could use every day and you could start implementing now before we get to that i do want to explain to you guys that it is very important to have a strategy to be able to use because when i first started sports betting a long time ago i didn't think of using really any type of strategies i really just went off of basically this is what i went off of gut feelings all right i went off of like well, this team is better than this team. They have a better record than this team. So let me bet the team with a better record. Like that, like I would think that type of thing. And more often than not, I would end up losing constantly because that's your natural thinking. And like, I always try to teach people that when you are looking at games and something looks too good to be true, it usually is. You gravitate towards that and you end up betting that and then you end up losing. So for example, a couple things that happened is like in an NBA game, you'll have a road favorite, which which is usually a trap bet. They're the better team, but they're on the road. And they're like minus two. And you're like, this team is way better than the other team that's at home. So you go and bet that team that's on the road by you know minus two thinking, oh, they're, they're gonna win. And they probably are gonna end up losing the game. And it happens all the time in sports betting all the time earlier on in my career i used to just fall for those left and right like i always used to sit there and think and i'd look at totals in a game and i'd be like well we got two high scoring teams why is the total set like mediocre why is it low these guys should blow this out of the water next thing you know not looking deeper into it you just look at the top layer of it you think oh yeah this game's gonna go over and then you bet on it and it goes under it happens all the time so when I was first starting out, I would get caught with this left and right because that's the way that it rolls. When it's too good to be true and it seems like that this team's better than this team or these teams are high scoring, they should score a lot of points, they, it usually just doesn't happen. That gut feeling that you get when you feel like there's no way this team's gonna beat this team, it's usually wrong. And to be honest with you, you're more profitable whenever you get that feeling and you think that way, you bet the complete opposite of that. That's what it's about. It's like if you get that gut feeling and you feel like that this is too good to be true and you wanna go and you wanna bet that, well, you should obviously just go and bet the opposite because more often than not you're gonna lose when you're on that one side when you're thinking like oh man this play is gonna win this team should beat this team you're gonna lose in the long run you might as well go and bet the opposite because it changes your mind there because you're like betting the opposite of what you feel but if you're always losing so if you just bet the opposite of what you're always losing obviously you're gonna be on the winning side of that and i figured that out a little bit later on in my sports betting career because it's tough to think of that think of it this way if you go through you know a day and you're looking at games and you you got your gut feelings and stuff like that to go opposite of that is almost like insane because you're pretty much rewiring your brain and pretty much going on the opposite of what your brain is telling you makes sense it's very hard for a lot of people to do but that is something that i had to learn on early on because that's the way it is you're going to keep losing if you think you know more than what the number that the sports book's giving you and you don't have data that's backed on that and you don't have a right strategy that you have in place and you're just doing it off of just the top layer like i said pretty much just looking at a couple things and being like yeah this will work doing that is going to doom you and you're going to end up losing money but i'm going to go over with you guys how you can craft your sports betting strategy so that way you can start making money like right off the rip so that way you guys understand exactly how it works in the comment section if you guys got questions and stuff like that i might be able to get to it at the end of this but you guys know how it rolls i'll try my best to get to you guys as you're putting in questions and comments and stuff like that but if you're in for the ride grab a pen and a paper and pay attention because it's going to be important first thing that we're going to look at is your base layer which is going to be your bankroll all right i get this question all the time like what is the bankroll what is your unit size and stuff like that so bankroll is the money that you have set aside so that way you know that's the money that you're going to use to bet on sports strictly that's it your unit size is the portion that you're cutting out from that bankroll to bet on each game the most basic bankroll is a thousand dollar bankroll here's the thing not a lot of people even understand that having a thousand dollars set aside they don't even understand that they don't understand that they even need that type of money put aside you know you just go in your pocket and grab your change in your pocket and you think you're gonna make bets that's not how this works you want to take it serious you want to craft a strategy well you need to start with your base layer your base layer is how much money you have to be able to do this that's it's plain and simple. You need money to make money. That's what it is. So your bankroll is $1,000. Now this is going to shock a lot of people, all right? Because when you have $1,000 set aside, most of these guys are betting a couple hundred dollars a play. Now, the reason why you don't do that is because you're only going to last a small losing streak. If you go on a small losing streak, you're going to be done pretty much. So you need to understand this. Your unit size should be between 10 and $30. That might not look satisfying, right? If I'm only betting 10 to $30, I'm not making too much money. But guess what? That is what it is. If you have $1,000, that's what you're betting. You're not betting a 
couple hundred bucks. You have a thousand dollar bankroll and you're betting $200. Guess what? You lose five games. You lose five games in a row and you're completely done. Realize that. You should not be betting a couple hundred bucks a game with a thousand dollar bankroll. It's just not how it works. But first, like I said, we want to get that correct right off the bat as in your bankroll of what you need to look at. Now, if you want to have a couple hundred dollars as a unit size, what do you need to make that happen? Well, you need $10,000. Why is that? Because now if you're doing one to 3% of that, look, your unit size is 100 to 300. How many of you guys that are out there that watch my videos, that you guys go out and you bet on sports and you guys are betting in this bracket, 100 to $300 a game, but you have nowhere near a $10,000 bankroll. A lot, I can answer that, a lot. Because this is like the normal size that anybody usually wants to bet is between that on any game. Doing that puts you in a hole. If you do not have this type of bankroll, you start losing, puts you in a hole. For example, like I said, if you had a thousand dollar bankroll, and you're betting this, you're gonna be done in a couple of games. Just an example, a bad day. If you bet five games on and have a bad day and go 0 and 5, your bankroll's done, shattered. You have no bankroll anymore. You gotta understand that. Now, if you're betting $300 and you have a $1,000 bankroll, you lose three games, you're done. So you cannot be doing that. I see videos all the time of these stupid ass people that put on these TikTokers and shit, and they're like, put 15% on this game, put 20% of your bankroll on this game. You can't do that. You can't do that, all right? Because you won't last the ups and downs, the roller coaster rides. I've been through it for years. You will not last if you are continuously betting at this mark with not a bankroll like that. You need to understand that. And then again, when you don't have a solid strategy in place, you're just willy nilly throwing money, you know, you're bound to hit losing streaks of five, six, seven games in a row that you're gonna lose. Now you will win, you know, a couple here in a row, here, here and there, you know, you will. But the thing is, is when you hit those losing streaks, they're gonna tap you out. You're gonna lose everything, all right? That is what happens. So first step, the base layer of a strategy for sports betting, you need to understand the money management and the money management management correlates to what your bankroll is and what your unit size is. So if you do not have a $10,000 bankroll, you should not be betting $100 to $300. All right, just remember this. Whatever your bankroll is, it should be one to 3%, except for one exception. And it's because you don't have any money. So if you have a bankroll that is 500 or lower, then you gotta bet 5%. Now, reason behind that is because you're not gonna get anywhere betting one to 3% on $500 to $100 bankroll. It is not. $100 bank, you'll be betting a dollar a play. You're not gonna get anywhere. It's cool to paper trade. I mean, at that point, you might as well just be paper trading. Because if you're betting a dollar, two, three dollars a game, you're not getting anywhere. That's not even gonna give you a substantial amount of money to eat lunch over a course of a whole entire month, all right? So you need to understand that. You need to realize that stuff. Get through your base layer first. Your base layer is bankroll, correlate that, make sure you have the right unit size, all right? If you don't have the right unit size, and you don't have it correlating with your bankroll, recipe for disaster, more likely you are going to end up losing money or you will lose everything. You'll lose your whole bankroll. Then you gotta go and you gotta put more money in, all right? You gotta shell more money out. I know, trust me, because I've been through this earlier on in my career, I did not understand this. I didn't. I was the guy that was with a thousand dollars betting a couple hundred dollars a game. And then I would lose two or three games and half of my bankroll would be gone. And then I'm tilting. And then I just go bet $500 on a game and lose it. And then next thing you know, I lost everything in one day. It happens, guys. It happens to everybody out there that watches this stuff. All right, so first off, bankroll unit size. Get that right. Get it through your head that that's the base layer. Can't get through the base layer here of understanding that you need a bankroll to be able to make money. We can't even get on to the next steps. So remember that. Make sure you have your bankroll your unit size. You have that correlated, all right? Your unit size, one to three percent, and also straight bets. Make sure you're doing straight bets. We're not doing parlays. We're not doing two legs, three legs, four legs, five legs, six legs. We're not doing any of that stuff. All right, you're sticking straight, straight bets. That's all they are, no matter what the odds are. All right, don't worry about the odds. We're not worried about that. That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about getting our bankroll right, learning that we need to just stick to straight bets. So this is your base, base of starting a strategy. There is no strategy if you don't have this stuff. So make sure you have your bankroll set, unit size set, understand you're sticking to straight bets. So once we got that clear, now we can get on to our next step. All right, now let's talk about strategy wise. What should you look at on a day-to-day -day basis? College basketball, bunch of games. What are we looking at? Line movement. First thing we're gonna be paying attention to. Now, what is line movement? Line movement is when you are looking at odds. So let's say spreads, totals, 
money lines. Well, when that number opens, let's go for a spread for example. Let's say 76ers, let's say they open up at minus six. That's a spread. That's what you'll see. And then you'll see from there, let's say this is what it opened up at. Opened up 76ers minus six. Now, later on in the day, news comes out, you know, all the players are playing, Joel Embiid's playing, everybody's playing and whatnot. So people feel feeling good about 76ers here. Now it's climbed up to minus nine points. This is line movement. All right, line movement is when a number starts moving up. Now let's say for example, a total. Let's say it was 220. And then as it went throughout the day, it went to 224. That's line movement. Line movement is seeing exactly the numbers, the numbers moving, the spreads, the totals, the money lines, seeing that stuff move. That is exactly what it is that you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to the line movement. So let me explain a little bit deeper on when we look at line movement, how you want to address it. You always want to look at what the opening line is. So the opening line is what the line is set at as soon as the day starts. Sometimes the night prior, they'll, they'll put opening lines out. So like I said, let's say the 76ers opening line was minus six. All right, that's what it opened up. At. Now, as we're going through the day, let's say there's an hour before game time. This number went to minus nine. So what does that mean? That means that it opened up at six. Now it went drove all the way up to nine. That means that there's money being pet on that side. It's driving that number up. All right, you want to see this happen. Also, not just with the favorite though, because for example, if this happened, let's take a look here. Instead of it being minus nine, it goes to minus three. Then if this happens, like opened up at minus six, went down, 76ers went down to minus three. Now you want to take a look on the opposite side there. Pay attention to what happened there on the underdog side. Line movement works both ways. So you want to go through and you want to depict pretty much on a whole slate of games where this type of line movement is. You want to see line movement. Now what you don't want to see is opened at minus six, an hour before the game is still at minus six. That doesn't tell you anything. There's nothing there. You don't need to pay attention to games like that. Or even this, open up minus six, is now it's minus six and a half. Not a lot of line movement there. All right, there's not much line movement, there's nothing there. All right, so these games, we don't pay attention to. You don't waste your time diving further into those games. You don't, there's no reason to. All right, there's no reason to do that. You don't need to look deeper into a game that has no line movement because there's no story to go with that. Now, when there is a game, like I said, where there is line movement and, you know, moved up to minus nine or whatnot, that's telling you a story. Well, it opened up at minus six, now we're sitting at minus nine. Why did that happen? Now it's your job to go figure out exactly why that happened. All right, you need to go and understand this line moved this amount. Well, let me go see exactly why it moved that amount because we got to see exactly what it is. It could be injuries. It could be somebody sitting out. There could be nothing. There could be no reason why that line moved besides maybe the sports book put out a soft line and people attacked it. There could be various ways for the reason why that that line moved, but it's your job to go and figure that out. But then, again, go through a slate of games, look at what the opening numbers are, look at what they are an hour before the game, circle the games that have the biggest line movements. Now, what I do wanna tell you guys though, is when you are looking at line movement, when you see something like this, where it opened up at minus six, now it's sitting at minus nine, that's what you want to see. So now if everything lined up for you, you should be looking at the 76ers in this game. You shouldn't be looking at the underdog. So here's the thing. Let's say that they were playing the Lakers. Now the Lakers line would be plus six. This would be plus nine, now, right? If it moved. So when a, a line moves like this, 76ers open minus six, now it goes to minus nine. The bet that you never want to make here, this is the wrong way to read line movement, is looking at this and you end up betting here. That's not where you want to be looking. You do not want to bet where the line movement went the opposite way. So if we look at the opposite here, you got the Lakers. They opened up at plus six, went to plus nine. So they went up as the way you don't want it to go. So now if you're sitting there and you ended up betting Lakers plus nine, because you've seen this line, the plus go from six to nine, you're on the wrong side there. All right, you're on the wrong side looking at the line movement. For you to be over here and to be on the Lakers, you would want to see this go to three, this go to plus three. That's for you to be on this side, this is what you'd want to be looking at. For you to be on this side, it's going to be what I just showed you. So understand that reading line movement correctly is very, very important because you could set yourself up right in the beginning on the wrong side if you don't read it correctly. So I'm using NBA right now as an example, but this applies to any sport. But when you are using your line movement, you need to understand of reading it correctly. So if it goes up, you're looking at the favorite. If it goes down, now you flipped. You're looking at this side, all right? Understand that and how important that line movement is. That right there can set yourself up for success right out the gate, just having that down. If you strictly, just straight up, had the right bankroll management, the right unit size, went through and looked at line movement and just purely played off a of line movement, you're still gonna win more than you lose doing this, what I was just showing you right now, plain and simple. 
Another thing that you need to understand, the numbers that you're looking at and how important those numbers are. Basketball, these numbers are very important, all right? Minus six, minus nine are completely different numbers there when it comes in basketball. The end of a game, let's say the 76ers are up by four or five points with 30 seconds left. What's gonna happen? Lakers are gonna foul them, right? They're gonna try to get some free throws going or whatnot. Well, they're more likely to cover that minus six than for that minus nine when the game is close at the end and they're occurring fouls. So understand that when you're betting certain type of sports, how important the number is that you're looking at. So many times where the line that it's at an hour before tip, you get burned. So I always suggest you buy it back. Now the odds on this might be a minus 150. All right, and this was minus 110. But guess what? Some instances, the person that bought this and went back down ends up winning, while this person ends up losing and got burnt. Understand how important it is, because what you're doing when you buy back a number and you buy back to an opening number, you're essentially seeing into the market. You got to see where the line movement is, where everything is situated, and then you're buying back that value. You might not believe that you're buying back that value if you're paying minus 150, but you are because like I said, sometimes this person will get burned while this person didn't. They paid a little bit extra, but guess what? I'd rather pay a little extra and win than to pay this number and then I end up losing. So every sport is different with that, all right? NBA, like I said, is important when you get on the spreads, these type of numbers on the spreads, you know, minus six, minus five, minus four, those type of numbers on the spreads, very important because the last minute, if they're up, if you're on the favorite, they still surpass that number. So you have to understand how important the numbers are even after, you know, you looked at the line movement and stuff like that. Learn how to manipulate the lines. You gotta be able to manipulate, go back to opening numbers, make sure that, you know, you understand how that works. That doesn't work for the underdog. So just cause I showed you this here, doesn't mean that if you're gonna go bet the Lakers plus nine, well now you're just gonna go back to plus six. You, you don't do that. That only works on the opposite side if what I showed you guys here, if it moved down. Minus three, plus three. So if it moved that way and now you're on the Lakers, now you're buying it back to this number here. All right, for the underdog side, now you're, you're getting some more points back if you're looking at the underdog. But this is very important. Key numbers, looking at numbers on how they work, line movement. This strategy that I'm showing you guys right here is a basic strategy, guys, basic. This is like the most basic it can come. This is the first layer of following into, you know, more in-depth stuff, all right? This is the just the top layer for that. Make sure you understand how important the line movement is. You shouldn't even be looking at anything else but this to start, all right? There's nothing else to look at besides the line movement, because that's gonna tell you the story to start out. Once you've depicted those games and you circle those games on your calendar and you're looking further into those games, you've already surpassed what a lot of people are not even doing, where they're just gonna go and look at the game that's on TV and they're gonna just guess and pretty much try to bet on something stupid like that. But listen to what I told you about how the line moves, how important it is to buy back these certain numbers because it will save you. Trust me, I see it every single day to where people that didn't buy back, they end up losing. And the people that did buy back, they end up winning. It happens every single day. The NFL, very important. Looking and buying back to key numbers, being on minus seven, minus six and a half, minus five and a half, NFL, stuff like that. Very, very important. People don't even realize that. I can spot an amateur better like that when they go and tell me that they went and bet the Chiefs minus seven and a half. It's the stupidest number I could ever think of betting in the NFL. Minus seven and a half. No reason for that. All right, you might as well go bet nine and a half. You're gonna bet minus seven and a half. It's the same exact thing. So understand how important numbers are, not just in the NBA, but in the NFL, college basketball, all that stuff, guys. It's important everywhere. So just understand how important that stuff actually is. Again, let's go through one more time here. Just the basics of what I was just teaching you. Bankroll, make sure you have a bankroll. If you don't have a bankroll, you shouldn't even be watching this video. You shouldn't even be in here right now if you don't have a bankroll. Just being honest. Some people might think I sound like a dick, but to be honest with you, if you don't have money, you're not gonna make money. It takes money to make money, plain and simple. Have the bankroll, have the unit size, one to 3% of that bankroll that you have set up. Understand how important that that really is. Once you have that set up, understand that you're just betting straight bets. We're not doing two legs, three legs, four legs. I don't care what the odds are. We're not doing them. We're not doing them at all. And then first thing you're looking at, line movement. Understand what the opening number, how important it is to about an hour before the game is gonna go. How important that is to look at and to pay attention to. Once you've found those games, understand how important it is to buy back to the original number. So that way you can understand exactly how important that is to get those numbers and get those points back. Because sometimes you just want this minus 110 here. You're gonna go for that and you end up losing. Remember that. You would rather pay a little extra and get a win rather than 
pay what everybody else is paying for and take a loss. Understand that. And another thing I want to add to this and buying back numbers and all that for everybody out there that says sports are rigged. Oh, they know what the number is. They know exactly. Well, listen, they cannot rig every single number on a board. That's not going to happen. All they can rig if they really came down to it and it really mattered is the final number that was given to everybody. That's the only number that they can really, really look at. I'll be honest with you. So when you're manipulating the lines yourself, you don't even have to worry about that stuff if you really think that sports are rigged. Usually people that think sports are rigged are just people that lose all the time. They're always on the wrong side. <laughs> when you're on the winning side, you don't always think they're rigged. I'll just be honest with you. But very important. Like I said, line movement, very important. So this is gonna be kind of a part one of how you're gonna depict and go through your sports betting strategy and how to build that. Just understand, I'm gonna go through it slowly with you guys because this is pretty much step one of how you go through stuff. This is your base layer. Understand how important it is to have a base layer because if I overwhelm you guys with everything right now, you'll be jumbled up all over the place. So we're not gonna do that, all right? Your base layer is your line movement. Understand how important the opening number is to compared to what it ends up closing at and understand that your bankroll, none of this happens if you don't have a bankroll. If you have pocket change, none of this stuff happens. So understand how important it is to have money to be able to make money, especially in this game. If you guys got questions, now it's time. Let's try to get to it. How much of a bankroll should I be betting a day? So one to three yeah. percent. One to three percent is what you should be betting per day for of your, your bankroll. That's your unit size. As for bets, it's whatever goes through the criteria that you're looking at. There's never like a really solid, you know, I should only do one bet. I should only do three. I should only do five. It's really whatever comes out to it. But when you are really actually looking in depth and going through a slate of games, there's really only like one to three games sometimes. If that, sometimes there's only one. Does it matter if it's 1% or 3% or is there a number of units I should be betting daily? So on the 1% to 3%, you need to stick one or the other. So if if you're gonna do 1%, 2%, or 3%, you have to stick with that for a whole entire month. You can't jockey your unit size and do one day you're doing 1%, next day you're doing 3%, next day you're doing 2%, can't do that. The reason why you can't do that is because you could win the 1% bet and then you lose the 3% bet, now you're down two units or now you're down you know, even more. Can't do that, can't jockey your unit size. Stick to one and ride that out for the whole entire month. My biggest problem is I can't tell if a strategy is winning or losing. Like how do we back test these strategies? So the best way to back test a strategy is to log it. You have to log it and it takes seasons to be able to understand this stuff. A lot of people come to me after a week or two and they figured something out and they think they found a winning strategy. That's not how that works. You need to understand that if throughout the whole entire season, your strategy worked, now you might be onto something, but anything could happen for one to two weeks. I can flip a coin and probably win for one to two weeks, but as for a whole season, that's not going to work. So you got to understand to be able to back test stuff, you have to log stuff and that takes time. A lot of people are not willing to put in that time to understand that. That's how I was able to come up with all the strategies that I was able to profit from month in and month out is by being back tested of years. All right, that's years, guys. And I constantly have stuff on the burner that is going through all my strategies, but it takes years for them to prove that they can actually be profitable. You have to understand that it takes time. This game is not a short game. You're not gonna figure it out overnight. It takes time. You gotta dedicate some time. You gotta understand how important that is. Can you explain one more time if line moves up, which side to be on? So again, opening number, let's say it's minus six. 76ers goes to minus three. Now we're looking on the underdog side. This number goes to minus nine, goes up, looking at the favorite, goes down, looking at the underdog. Simplest way to put it there. Goes up, favorite, down, underdog. Remember that. Where do you track line movement? There is a lot of places to be able to track line movement. You just gotta look, just go and type in sportsbook odds and you'll see a, a bunch of stuff like that. What are your thoughts on spreadsheet models for sports betting? I'm fine with, with all type of models. But like I said, you gotta take your time to go through it. It's gotta be back tested and it takes seasons, it takes years to do that stuff. But as long as you stay at it and you don't miss days or nothing like that and you log the right information in, you'll see what happens with it. What advice do you have on NBA player props? I got like a couple of YouTube videos on player props. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely go check that stuff out. Is there any correlation between using promos and getting limited? No. No, I mean, getting limited, this happens when you're betting a heavy unit size and you're consistently winning. To avoid that, you spread that unit size out amongst multiple sports books. If you're in a state where you have plenty of sports books, you shouldn't have any problem doing that. And then you shouldn't end up getting limited. So that's the way to kind of offset that. But having bonuses and stuff, that doesn't really affect any of that. How many bets would you place a day? Again, there's not really a number on that. Like your average, I would say sometimes you can put an average out there of don't do more than five. I say that in other videos, like don't do more than five. But sometimes when you're doing real research and looking in depth, you're not gonna find even five plays. So one, three, you usually wanna have an odd number of plays. So like one or three or five, because if you do two plays and you win one, lose one, 
you know, you're most likely going to lose a little bit of money. So I always say keep it in the odd range of number of plays. That is pretty much it for today, guys. Like I said, this is the step one base layer of what I just taught you on how you can start crafting a sports betting model, how you can start looking at your strategies. It starts with the basics. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. I'm Frank with Linemaker Sports. I'll see y'all later.